In this video, we're going to take a look at Unit 6, Lesson 11, Practice Problems. So for number one, it asks us to write the equation of a line passing through the origin. And so remember, the origin is the point 0, 0, and then perpendicular to this line. So perpendicular is going to be trying to tell you the slope. So perpendicular means that you need an opposite reciprocal slope. So we're going to find the slope of the line that they give us, and then we're going to look for um, the opposite reciprocal of that. So the slope of this line is 5, and then I like to just write down perpendicular slope. So I have the slope they gave me and the one that's perpendicular. So this is a positive 5, so our, slope, our perpendicular slope is going to be negative for the opposite, and then we're also going to flip it over. So there's a 1 under here, so this will be 1 over 5. So this is the slope that we're going to be using for our line, negative one-fifth, and we want to be going through the origin. So then we'll go ahead and plug it into point slope form. So y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. And so your y coordinate of the origin is zero. Okay, your x coordinate of the origin is also zero. And then our slope is um, negative one-fifth here. So that would be just putting it into point slope form. You also could put it into slope intercept form, knowing that the y-intercept is zero. So this is where it crosses the y-axis, and then you could have just plugged your slope in here. So y equals negative one-fifth x plus zero would have worked as well. Match each line with a perpendicular line. So remember, perpendicular is trying to get you to look at slopes, and you want to make sure that you have opposite reciprocal slopes. Whoops. Okay, so we want to do opposite reciprocal slopes here. Just gonna write it out so that we remember. Um, so go ahead and look for the slope of each piece so that we can look for them to be opposite reciprocals of one another. So some of them are going to be kind of, you know, easier to see. So like this one, we immediately see that the slope is 5. This one is in point slope form, so we see that the slope here is negative 2. And then this one is giving us between two points. So we're going to want to look at the distance from, from the y's. So subtract the y's. So 9 minus 5 gives you 4 for the distance or for the kind of the height of that segment. And then the width of that segment would be subtracting the x's. So 1 minus negative 1 would be 2. And so that's giving us the slope of that point. Okay, it's height over its width of that little slope triangle. So um, 4 divided by 2 gives us 2 for this slope. So same idea for this point. So we'll do um, 9 minus 12, which is negative 3. And then we'll do 17 minus 2, which is 15. And so then our slope of this one is going to be the height, negative 3, over the width, 15, which simplifies to negative 1 fifth as a fraction. So there's the slope of number 1. Number 2 has a slope of negative 1 half. And then this one we could subtract 2x from both sides. So the top of our slope is going to be negative 2 and then divide by negative 4. So our slope here is going to be 2. Um, again, if you need to write it out, you can certainly subtract 2x from both sides. So then you get negative 4y equals negative 2x plus 10. Then divide by negative 4. So you end up with y equals 
Um, whoops, and why did I write that? That's one half, not two. Okay, hold on. This should have been one half. Positive one half. Okay, sorry about that. So then this simplifies to one half X and then plus, and you could simplify this to negative five halves if you want, but this is the slope. Okay, so the slope of number three is one half. So now you just want to match opposite reciprocals. Okay, so the opposite reciprocal of five is negative one fifth. So A and number one go together. The opposite reciprocal of negative two is positive one half. So, num so B and number three go together. Now that I wrote my slope correctly, positive one half. And then C, the opposite reciprocal of two is negative one half. So C goes with number two. All right, number three asks you to um, take a look at the rule. So remember that this rule takes a line perpendicular to itself. So select all rules that take a line perpendicular to itself. So this is gonna mean anything that looks like this or a dilation of it because a dilation of a line just stretches it and it doesn't change its slope. So as long as it's this similar idea or a dilation of this. So this one is only multiplying the height of the line by two, but not the width. So this one is gonna change the slope. So that's not gonna be good. Okay, this one that does the opposite of both the X and the Y actually does a 180 degree rotation. And so that's going to flip the line back onto itself, the original line back onto itself. So that's not going to give you a perpendicular line. Okay, this one is the same idea as this, just a different opposite coordinate. So it's just going to rotate it 90 degrees in the other direction. So this one is good. This one again dilates the Y or stretches the Y by a half and the X by negative two. Okay, so this is not keeping it in um, proportion. So this one's gonna change the slope. So that's gonna be bad. This one is multiplying both by four with that rotation. So this is gonna be good because it's just gonna be stretching the line um, in both directions which will not change the slope. All right, the number four, write the equation of a line with X intercept of three and a Y intercept of negative four, and then write the equation of a line parallel here. Um, so with these intercepts, if you just want to draw a sketch, whoops, that's not going to work. If you want to draw a sketch to come up with the slope, you can, um, thinking about where three zero is and where zero negative four is. So then that's gonna give you a height here of four. If you were to draw your slope triangle on to connect these two points and then an X of three. So this line is gonna have a slope of four thirds. You can also subtract these points. Okay, so you can do um, negative four minus zero and then you can do zero minus negative three and then divide to get that positive four thirds then plugging into um slope intercept form okay because we have the y intercept so then we'll do y equals the slope which is four thirds times x um, plus the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is negative four. So you can write it like this. Um, you could also write it as y equals four thirds x minus four. Um, then write the equation of a line parallel to this given line. So parallel means same slope. So we're gonna be using a slope of four thirds and it just says write the equation of a line parallel to this. So you can write whatever equation you want. It just has to have a slope of four thirds. So if you want to write in 
Um, if you want to write in slope intercept form, you can just do four thirds X plus or minus whatever number you want. So it could be this, you could do this, you could do a decimal, doesn't matter. As long as the um, slope is four thirds, you could write it in point slope form if you wanted to. Okay. Main thing here would be that your slope in each of them is, in the equation that you wrote, is four-thirds. Okay, number five says lines L and P are parallel. Select all true statements about um, this diagram. So triangle ABD, so here's ABD, is similar to CEF. That would be a true statement. Okay, you're going to have the 90 degree angle here um, and then proportional sides. So this is one, this is three, this is two, this is six. So by side angle side for sure, they would be similar. Um, triangle ADB is congruent to CEF. Congruent means same exact size. That is not true. The slope of L is equal to the slope of P, yes, because they're parallel. Um, but we can also see the slope here is one third. So with when I drew on that triangle, so rise is one, run is three. Here the rise is two, the run is six. Two over six simplifies to one third. Um, and then since these are similar triangles, that means that angle A is congruent to angle C. So the sine of congruent angle, so if A and C are the same exact angle, then their sines are going to be equal to each other. Um, and then how about the sine of B? So here's B and the cosine of C. So remember that B and C are called complements of each other. They add to 90. And um, so then the sine and cosine of that are going to be the same. And you could also think about it if you actually like wrote out these numbers. Um, so then you could figure out the length of this hypotenuse here by doing three squared is nine plus one squared is 10. So this is gonna be square root of 10. This triangle is two times bigger. So this one's gonna be two root 10. And then you could actually write out the cosine if you wanted, okay, to check. So cosine of B is going to be 1 over the square root of 10. Sine, oh, sorry, um, I'm supposed to be doing cosine of C. So I highlighted the wrong angles here. All right, cosine of C. So here's angle C. Um, so cosine of C is... 6 over 2 root 10, and then these could each divide by 2, so then you're going to get 3 over root 10, and then the sine of B, okay, so then angle B, the sine opposite is 3 over hypotenuse is root 10, and then you would see that those are the same, so that's another way if you forgot that B and C would be complementary since they're within the right triangle, you could have actually written it out. All right, select the equation that states that x, y is the same distance from 0, 5 as it is from y equals 3. So remember, if a point is the same distance from a point and a line, that means it's on a parabola. And the given point is the focus, and the given line is the directrix. So we can plug it into here, which is just a Pythagorean theorem. This is the distance from the directrix, and then this is the distance to the focus, and those should be the same. So we will do y minus the directrix equals x minus the x of the focus plus y minus the y of the focus. Um, and so when we plug in the directrix, the directrix is negative 3. So this is going to be y plus 3 squared. So we can go ahead and look at this. Now they have them on the opposite side. So their y plus 3 is on the right side. But now you can see this one says y minus 3. So that's automatically out. Um, and so is D. Then we can plug in the 
x coordinate of the focus, so x minus the x coordinate is 0. And then y minus the y coordinate is 5. So this is just going to simplify to just x squared right here, which we see in our equation. And then this will be y minus 5 squared. And so we see that this one has a y plus 5. So this one um, is out. So b is the equation. Has a focus of 0, negative 5, and a directrix of y equals um, negative 3. Select all equations that represent this graph. So we've got a few different forms going on here that maybe you recognize. So see um, a slope-intercept form and then a couple point slope forms. So let's go ahead and figure out the slope. So the slope is going to be negative since our line is going down from left to right. So we've got down 2 over 2. So the slope here is going to be negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So let's see if that rules any out. So the slope in this one is negative 1. We see that negative in front of the x. The negative in front of the parentheses for point slope form. Negative 1 in front of x here. This one has a positive 1, so this one is out. And this one has a negative 1 slope. Okay, <clears throat> um, then a couple different things we can see here. We can see the um, y-intercept is 2. So for this first one that's in slope-intercept form, we see that it has um, the slope of negative 1. And it's got the y-intercept of 2. So this equation is good. This next one is in point slope form. Um, and so a point that they're putting in is negative 1 for the x and 3 for the y. So does our equation go through the point negative 1, 3? And it does. So this is good. This one, um, we could manipulate this a little bit. We could add 3 to both sides if we wanted to to get it into, into slope-intercept form. So then we'd be left with y equals, and then negative x, negative 1 plus 3 is plus 2. And then we could match that up with the y-intercept of 2 and see that that one's good. Could have also plugged a point in here. Okay, then this one is still written in point-slope form. So we've got an ordered pair. So the x that we plugged in was 3. The y that we plugged in was negative 1. So does this equation go through the point 3, negative 1? And it does. So this equation is good as well. All right, then number 8 says write a rule to describe this transformation. So remember, you're trying to figure out what is happening to the x's and what is happening to the y's to get us this new um, ordered pair. So seeing if there's a pattern with the x's, so 3 to 6, 4 to 8, 5 to 10, 7 to 14. So hopefully we're recognizing that that is doubling the x. So our x is 2 times bigger. Then taking a look at the y. So 2 to 4, negative 1 to negative 2, 1 to 2, 3 to 6, so the y's are also 2 times bigger. So our rule would be xy maps to 2x, 2y.